Hi, this is Lynn Baber. We are all living in unprecedented times, at least in, in our experience, in mine for sure. And one of the things I was thinking about today is what a fabulous opportunity this is. We're in the midst of the COVID-19 crisis. Most of us are staying home. Uh, we're, we're going to the grocery store when we have to, but otherwise, we're doing our best to stay safe, keep our families safe, and keep others safe. One of the greatest impacts this has had is on the faith community. Churches and organizations are relying on internet connections or telephone trees, call trees, to stay in touch with the people in their groups. There's a lot to be said about this, but one of the things that we are pushed to do now is to examine what it is that we believe. We do know that when this is over, we're not going to be in the precise place we were when we started. Who will we be? What will it look like? Most important, what is it gonna be like in our families, in our communities, and in our churches? This is a time to reflect and to reset. There's a story I wanted to share with you because we don't always understand um, what we truly believe until we're pushed. Awareness is a big thing. Uh, quite a few years ago, I believed that, I mean, to the core of my being, that I would never let someone hurt an animal. It just wouldn't matter. It was just such a, uh, an, a heart issue that no matter what, I would put myself up to defend an animal, a dog, a horse, you name it. And I believe that was true. I already knew that that list of principles and high-mindedness that we have when we're young gets smaller as we have more and more experience. Well, one day on my training facility in Arizona where I trained horses, this beagle came, comes rushing through the gate, yipping and yiping, and he's obviously in distress, and I notice he has a shock collar on. And he comes in, and he ends up diving under one of my horse trailers. And I can tell someone is shocking this dog repeatedly, but I can't see anyone. Now this is in the foothills north of Phoenix in Arizona, so I could see a long way. It's not like there were treed areas or anything. Well, finally, some kid comes down the road, about 10 years old, and he keeps shocking this poor dog. And so I hauled him in and I said, stop it. Anyway, after talking with this kid for some time, I had him almost to the point where he was ashamed of what he was doing because he understood he was punishing this dog and the dog had no idea why. So I thought, all right, this kid needs a little bit more education. I'm gonna take him home. So we took the kid and the dog home, which was to a neighbor. It was right across the street. There was one empty field and then the house where this child lived. I didn't know where he lived until I went to get him home. Took him home and it became apparent that his father did not think this was much of an issue. So I said my piece as much as I could and left. It did not take long for me to realize that this particular neighbor was a problem. He had actually shot pistols into another neighbor's barn when the guy's kids were there. The sheriff said, we can't do anything unless we catch him shooting the gun. Well, there are times when people retaliate when they think they've been attacked, and I was familiar with them. My horses, we're not very far away from this guy's house. And with his history, I knew it wouldn't take much for him to actually come over and injure my animals or kill them. And that's when I realized, you know what? There was a limit. I would not defend another animal 
if it put mine in jeopardy. So with, with increased awareness, we, we realize sometimes that what we believe is not truly the heart of the matter. And amongst this COVID-19 issue, we are pushed to take a look at things. What do we believe? What you believe determines who you are. Everyone preaches the gospel that's in their heart. What really lives in our heart is what the world sees. Sometimes we talk a little bit differently, but our walk, our demeanor, and our actions all come from the heart. So when you look at people today, we are in crisis. People react differently. Some, it's like, you know what, it's fine. You know, we can roll with the punches. Other people are pushed far more seriously when their income, when health concerns, when finding food or just having connection have become so important and so much more difficult to satisfy. So what is it today that you believe? When this comes out of, you know, what are you doing? This is a time when the Lord says, I want my people to really understand where they are. Where are you? This is the time that the Lord is giving us to reflect, to consider what is it we really believe. Look at those around you. Look at how they're responding. Look at the people, the talking heads on TV, the people who are writing commentary. Listen to your faith leaders. And if you're a faith leader, this is the time to lead your flock to reflect what do we really believe? What is it that we stand on? Where, can, where are we unshakable? But what do we have to look at and recognize that maybe my reality is not what I thought, just like it wasn't when that poor dog came yelping onto my property. Within a half an hour, one of my core principles changed. Where are you today? This is an amazing opportunity. God is in this. There is a blessing in this. For those who believe, if and even if you become a COVID-19 statistic, it doesn't matter. You're with Jesus Christ. But take stock today. Whatever is in your heart is the message you will show the world. Some people's walk and talk doesn't match. But for children of the King of Kings, that cannot be our reality. So take heart. This is an amazing time. It is an opportunity. Pray about it. Reflect. Become closer than ever to the people who mean the most to you. And I thank you for your attention.